Have you decided to move in together? Or did you recently get married? Here's a survival guide for the first year of sharing a roof. Hi, I'm Dr. Wendy Walsh. I have a PhD in clinical psychology and I'm a wee tad obsessed with the science of love. You know, couples often say that everything was great while they were dating or while they were engaged, but as soon as they moved in together, either before marriage or after marriage, all the problems started. All those tiny little habits that didn't bother them before suddenly were huge and drove them crazy. Well, here's a quick survival guide so that you can get through the first year smoothly. First of all, you gotta understand why the little idiosyncrasies are starting to bother you. When you're not living in the same house, you get to compartmentalize a bit, save all your kind of bad behavior for home. And when you're together, you can be the person you wished you were. So now for many couples, reality is setting in. It's also important to realize that every single intimate relationship is a constant struggle between a union and autonomy. Think about it, union, security, comfort, protection, smothering, engulfing. Think about autonomy, freedom, loneliness. And this is what's going on in people's heads all the time in relationships, trying to find that balance between union and autonomy. So when you first move in together and you notice all those little things that drive you crazy, you know what they say, the toothpaste not rolled properly, the toilet seat left up, the dirty laundry on the floor instead of the basket, the hair in the sink, whatever it may be. The important thing for you to realize is that this is your problem, not theirs. It's really crucial that you understand that you're the one having an emotional reaction to it. And when you finally express it to your partner, I want you to couch it in those terms. Hey, I'm having a hard time with this. Is there a way you could help me or support me so that I'm not struggling so much? Secondly, you might notice many things about your partner that are driving you crazy, but I promise you, if you bring them all up, it's only going to hurt your relationship. Choose a couple. Focus on that only at the beginning. Don't make moving in together a time to cause so much strife in your relationship that you end up having an unhappy relationship. Find one or two things, explain that you have a problem with them, and try to find solutions together. And while you're trying to find those solutions, be very clear and precise about how you'd like your partner to change. So you might say very specifically, Every time you go to the bathroom, would you try to remember to close the lid of the toilet seat? Boom. Don't say, I wish you could help out more with laundry. I wish you got the groceries sometimes. That is not clear. It is not concise. It's way too vague. So be very specific about what you're hoping to see. Also, remember to water what you want to grow, not the weeds. If your relationship becomes one of you criticizing all the time, Nobody's gonna wanna behave for you. You have to reward your partner. Catch them being good. Give them affection and compliments for any behavior you see that you like. Then they get addicted to that good reward and they're gonna try to avoid the negative rewards. Finally, look at yourself and your behaviors. Humans love reciprocity and we also like fair negotiations. So a healthy negotiation strategy might say, hey, if I can get you to close the toilet lid every time you go to the bathroom, what would you like me to change? You might be surprised what's bugging them about you. This is how you're actually setting up great communication styles to have a long-term, healthy, fulfilling, loving, and secure relationship. Good luck in that first year. It's not easy, but you'll get through this. I'm Dr. Wendy Walsh for Local Now. Thanks for watching. You can follow me anywhere on my social media at Dr. Wendy Walsh. We'll see you next time.